everyone and welcome back to my channel. We're down here in my craft room and it's the beginning of July and June was kind of like a whirlwind. Everything like school got out, uh, there was vacation, there's all kinds of stuff going on so I really didn't do a whole lot in the craft room in June but that was kind of my plan all along. Um, now I'm kind of ready to get back in and start uh, getting ready for my craft show in November and also I have a couple other things coming up too that I'll talk about in a second but let me go ahead and show you uh, what I've been starting to work on um, mainly at my craft show I have greeting cards and handmade journals and some tags and, and little things like that depending on how much I can how, how much I have time to make um, so I've been I actually had a lot of cards that I've made in the past and what I did was um, earlier this week, I kind of took an inventory on everything that I had, and I have this card box here. Um, this is, I think it's by Iris. It's just like one of those, you can get them anywhere. Um, it's got like plastic dividers in it. You can label it if you want, or you can even take the dividers out so you can have more room. But anyway, I went through and I kind of, I had a ton of already made greeting cards. So I went ahead and I packaged them up and um, kind of organize them according to theme. So birthday, get well, that kind of thing. Took an inventory, did a spreadsheet of everything that I have and then how, how much I want to bring to the craft show. Um, so like how many cards of each do I want to bring? Um, after I did that, I just kind of filled in all the blanks with, with what I had and then I, I just got the cards that I already had made ready. I put them in a plastic sleeve. I get these from clear bags. And then I added my label to the back and then an envelope inside, tucked inside, and then just a business card inside the envelope. So I, I got everything ready to go um, with what I have so far. And then I kind of uh, figured out what I still need to make. So I have quite a bit to make, but I have a lot of time to do it. So I started... Um, just kind of playing around. I had this piece of paper, which I've talked about in the past, never got around to making a card with it, but I finally did this little background paper. I showed this on my Instagram and I thought I'd give you a close up look. I, I made two of them because I had enough of the paper to make two. I honestly can't remember um, what line this is from. I don't know if I got it from like a scrapbook kit or something like that, but it's just so pretty with the mint green and the purple and the yellow. And I thought little bees would be a good theme for these uh, cards. So I added little a little uh, die cut hexagons with, uh, this is an older uh, wooden stamp from, I got from, I think, Hop, or no, I got it from Michael's. It was the Recollections. Um, it's this one right here. And I tried to find it online. I couldn't find it anywhere, but I like it because it's kind of a, a bigger stamp and it's sort of um, kind of like rounded. I like the way that that, that looks. So I added a little bit of co co coloring to it. And then what I showed on my reels was how I added, uh, to pop up the, the paper panel, I added colored fun foam to kind of coordinate with the colors on the front of the paper. And then I cut the foam so that it would be as big as the, uh, the paper panel on the outside so that you kind of get a little bit of color when you look to the side of the card like that. And this one's yellow and then I did a green one too. And I don't know, I just kind of thought it was just like a little something, you know, people could, you know, just just adds a little bit more interest. So I thought those were cute. So I also, I try to make doubles of cards. So when I make one, I try to make at least one or two of the same, of um, that same one so that I have extras when I'm selling them. Um, another thing I do is, and I've talked about this in the past, don't be afraid to make cards that you've already made. Um, you have the stamps and um, you can, you know, go ahead and do that. I have this little portfolio book that I made from, I think it was Snapfish. And I actually provide this at my craft shows just so people can kind of flip through it and kind of see what I've done in the past. But I'll go through and there's some some cards that I really like and I just, I'll, I'll make them again because I think they're really pretty. And, you know, for, or if I'm just stuck and I, I am kind of can't get started creatively, I'll just make a card that I already made. So it kind of gets me going and then I'll, I'll kind of um, get some more ideas as I'm, as I'm making cards or tags. And I also have a couple of my journals in the back here too that 
I took photos of just so you know people can see what what options are because I do offer um, some custom custom made things in my Etsy shop and um, also at the show so um, so that's kind of what I've been working on here as far as um, cards are concerned I'm going to try to do um, take a day a week and just work on greeting cards and I think that should get me to where I need to be um, for the fall and then I definitely need to have a big chunk of the cards be holiday cards because uh, that's going to be coming up around that time too. So, so that's everything over here. Um, let me see what else. Oh, let's go over here. I took a trip to Hobby Lobby. Um, I just kind of wanted to see what they had new. I haven't been there in a while. So, um, I went in for, actually, I went in and I'm going to talk about this in a second. I went in for some art journaling paper and then of course I had to check out some other things too. So I'll show you the, the paper I got. Um, so I'm going to be, I kind of like over the past month, I was sort of thinking about um, sort of expanding my art, you know, in addition to greeting cards and, and journals, what can I do with the journals? Um, you know, I don't just want to make journals. I want to also use the ones that I have, the, the ones that I make for myself. And I was trying to find, um, you know, think of things, think of, of ways that I would enjoy using the journals. And I follow a few people on um, Instagram um, that who, who do collage journaling. And I really, I like that way of, of um, kind of adding more things to your journal in addition to just the signatures and that kind of thing. So I thought I would kind of, um, I have all, I have so many supplies, I thought, um, I'll add some collage elements to my already made journals and then more writing on top of it, um, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, I wanted to get some just regular journaling paper so that I could add these as pages to my journals or else um, kind of stick them in, adhere them in um, after I create you know, a, a collage or something like that. So I got a couple different sizes. I like this Canson. I got this at, um, I actually got this at Michael's. Um, I um, just like the bright white of this paper. Um, I notice a lot of them have kind of like a like an ivory color or an off white or even like a super like it's almost white but not quite. <laughs> and I with my scrapbooking and everything, I always like a really bright white background. That's just me, but I know other people like a, kind of a softer look too. So, um, but these are just the ones that I really like. These Canson and this is the mixed media um, medium green paper. And it's just, um, it's got kind of a little tooth to it, so it can kind of grab onto paint or gesso or whatever you want to put on top of the, the pages. So I got a small one. Um, this is a five and a half by eight and a half. And then I also got a, a big one that's nine by 12. And I thought this would be fun to make, maybe try out some big journaling pages. Um, so this will be really nice too. And they, they're perforated, so you can just pop them out if you want to um, take them out of the, the notebook. So I got those two. And then um, back when I went to Hobby Lobby, um, I just, I picked up a couple of things. I got um, these texture combs. Uh, these are for kind of running through paint or even, I was thinking I would use them with our journaling for um, pastes. So like running these little uh, different, uh, edges through the, the texture paste. I thought that might look really good. Um, so I, I thought I'd test those out. And then I have to always have to check out the wooden stamps. <laughs> and I had talked a while back about um, kind of, I think it was a, a video, my last video, I had gotten some mushroom dyes and I was looking for the perfect mushroom stamp. And I actually found this little wooden stamp. I thought this was so cute. Um, it's kind of got that 60s mushroom look to it. And I thought, it would be fun to kind of stamp on little recipe cards or corners of pages in maybe a cookbook journal or something like that. So I, I really like this. And then I couldn't resist these two paper pads. These are just Paper Studio. Um, this one is called Preppy Petals. I'll just do a quick flip through. I just love the colors of this. Anything preppy, I just think is, is uh, really great. So let me try to pan out a little bit here. So there's just lots of bright greens, pinks, a little bit of blue, stripes, flowers, some plaids. So just some really fun colors. So I thought these would be fun to work with because I'm still I'm still making spring and summer cards. I I always like to make those. So really cheerful. And then I actually had um, 
seen this one first and um it's a it's craft paper but then it kind of has a I guess you would say it, it's almost like a clear embossing on it but more of a it's got a little bit of white um not quite a bright white embossing I love this one the cane print and again you could do this with stamps and craft cardstock but I like the 12 by 12 size because I'm thinking again I could use these in journals just for some texture and just something a little bit different. So I thought that the, I just like this neutral color. I thought this would be really nice. So that's just everything at Hobby Lobby. And then getting back to the whole art journaling thing, um, as I was, you know, kind of thinking about how I kind of want to, um, you know, expand my art a little bit, I picked up, I have, um, I don't even think I have it down here. Um, it's a, the art journaling magazine from Stampington. It's the same people that have in her studio magazine and um, some of the other like uh, Bella Grace and all those. I have I have the subscription to in her studio, but then I picked up a subscription to um, the art journaling magazine and I was I couldn't put it down. I was flipping through it and it has some great um, just ideas of, of things to do with your journals and how to kind of journal your thoughts and, um, you know, collage and all kinds of things. So I was really excited to kind of get started on that. And then this opportunity came up with a house of books. Uh, they do vintage um, ephemera kits. So they have all kinds of uh, vintage ephemera and then they offer a monthly kit, which I, I thought was really um, exciting and I kind of taken a look at that I thought about getting a kit and then they had a offered a brand ambassador program and so I applied for that and I got it and I'm, I'm really excited I'm going to be getting my first kit coming up um, probably by next week um, it looks like it's on its way so I'm going to do I'm going to kind of show that I got the large kit and I'm going to show that in a video and then I'm going to um, I, I think it's perfect to add to my journals and do collage with um, to kind of, you know, kind of expand my art a little bit. So I'm going to show you how I use those kits. Um, it, a lot of them are kind of more, more vintage looking, which I, I thought would be an interesting challenge too, because, um, I always kind of work with the like sixties and seventies retro looks. So I want to see what it would be like to kind of mix things together and, you know, try, try new things. So, um, so I will put a link to a house of books below and you can take a look at, um, what they have to offer. They also have a la carte items too, um, in addition to their subscription boxes. So definitely take a look at that. But um, so in getting ready for getting the, the package and, um, and showing it to everybody, um, I grabbed one of my, this is actually my first ring journal that I made and I haven't started writing in it or doing anything with it. And I thought this is the perfect journal to do some collage with. So once I get the kit, I'm going to kind of do maybe once a week or so, kind of have a, a journaling video where I do a page of collage and just kind of adding different elements from the subscription kit and some other things that I have, maybe even mixing uh, the subscription kit with uh, some of my, you know, like 60s and 70s uh, items. But I thought this, this is great because this is more, I have more kind of... Uh, just background type pages to work with where I can maybe add paint to it and just try some different things. I just, I was really excited after reading the art journaling magazine to just kind of just try something new a little bit. And um, so I think this will be really good. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just kind of tackle this, this journal here. And I think the theme of this journal I've decided is going to be, I found all these little pieces of paper that I saved that were little quotes. Whenever I hear an interesting quote, I write it down and I save it. And I thought, why not do collage pages in my journal and then add my quotes to it? So that's going to kind of be a theme of what I'm going to work on. But I'm also going to be doing, I'm going to be working in the, with the big um, mixed media pages and maybe doing some things with that too. So we'll kind of see where it goes. But um, but I'm excited to kind of like expand a little bit and, and try some new things. So it's kind of like every year I try something new and I'm still of course, going to be doing the cards and definitely the, the junk journaling and everything else, but I'm just going to kind of add more to it. And I think there'll be a lot more interesting videos and, and a lot more, um, more things to show. So, um, so that's, uh, pretty much it. 
Um, one thing I did change a little bit in kind of prepping for the art journaling thing, I used to have my vintage cookbooks up here, that, or the Better Homes and Gardens ringed binders, and I ended up moving those to my living room, and I added my typewriter. I have this um, Old Smith Corona typewriter, which I had up in my living room, and I, which it should have been down here, but I didn't have a place to put it. Now I have a place to put it. So this is going to be great for typing journaling, adding, you know, typing little words, um, the quotes that I want to type in the journal, um, you know, adding them to little embellishments and things like that. So this is going to be fun to work. Um, just have this typewriter handy so that I can actually use it. Um, another thing that is always helpful, or that has been helpful in the past when I've kind of dabbled a little bit in journaling is um, I just pulled this book out, this Art Journal Freedom. This is by Dina Wakely. This is such a great book um, just to learn the basics about collage, color, composition, and um, art journaling in general. Um, I'm going to reread this in addition to my um, art journal magazines um, just to kind of get some more tips and everything about how to, you know, kind of make everything cohesive on a page and um, how to better work with my journals. So so I think that will be, be really uh, fun too. So um, that's pretty much it. I think I've covered everything. I did do a dollar store trip this week. Um, I hadn't been there in months, so I wanted to um, stop off there and see what they had new, and they actually had a ton of great stuff, so I'm going to do a separate video on that, so stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for my unboxing um, from A House of Books. I'm going to put the link below um, that you can take a look at it. Um, they have their subscriptions start the first of the month, so if you sign up now, you will get next month's subscription, um, and the subscriptions are all... they're. They're, they're kind of just, they're all different. So you're going to get a little, it kind of describes in the um, description on, on the website. You'll get, you know, book pages and stamps and all different little types of ephemera, um, depending on what size um, package you get. So they have small, medium, and large boxes. You can also, in the comments, request um, whether you kind of like a more grungy look or more like a more kind of colorful look too, which I think is great. So, so that's an option as well. So I will put a link to that. And if you can, I would really recommend if you, if you don't get in her studio magazine already, pick up the summer, um, issue. They have a whole spread about Amber at House of Books, um, how she chooses her books, um, how she works in her studio. It's just, it's so interesting and it's a really good article. So, um, I definitely recommend that too. And I'll, I'll put a link over to the, to the Stampington website where you can pick up the single magazines. You can also, um, I think I see them at Barnes and Noble too, and maybe some other bookstores um, that they're available as well. So stay tuned. I've got a lot of stuff this month and um, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in my next video.